Today we're talking about tabletop game design and what types of designs are appropriate for the modern human. What types of game designs are appropriate for Neanderthals? <laughs> Welcome to Corner Case, you're in the hobby corner. I'm your host, your Cro-Magnon man, your best friend, Deck. And today I have the question for y'all, what types of game designs are appropriate in 2022? What is the role of tabletop games? I have a spicy take here, maybe it's not spicy, but games like Warhammer 40K and like Dungeons and Dragons arguably created the genres that they are in. They are so popular for so long. And that exactly is the reason why their game designs are antiquated in 2022. Before I just go ahead and say that, I want to talk about my thoughts on what is an appropriate game design for the modern human. And to do that, I'm going to ask you to think about another example that's happened in maybe not our lifetime, but over the course of the last 50 years, 100 years, I don't exactly know when, but think about the role of art in our lives. Now, think about way back in the day, Michelangelo, that's not even a painter, is it? That's not even a painter. Caravaggio, that's the first painter I think of. So think about painters a long time ago. Their role was to document. Painting was the thing that, that could achieve the greatest realism in an image. And so the role of painting was to simulate what's real. What happened when the camera came out? Did painting go away? It didn't. It changed the role of painting. Painting became not a way necessarily of achieving that accurate simulation of real life, but painting became a way for humans to capture the human experience, for people to express themselves in their art. It became an, an expression of style, a back and forth of style. That's what painting became, and that's what it remains to this day. The camera, so much better at simulating realism, so much better at simulating the moment, that became its role. When Dungeons & Dragons first came out, when Warhammer 40K first came out, what was their role? Well, that was a time before video games were very good. So their role was to simulate real life as much as possible, to get you immersed into those worlds and make you feel that simulation, that fantasy setting, the closest thing that they could get you to feel being in, in this elven kingdom, in this, this dwarven cavern, in space. That was the best way. That was the most accurate way. Now, 2022. We have amazing video game technology, like computer graphics are off the charts. We're heading into the metaverse now. There are so many different ways to experience simulations of things that aren't real. So what exactly is the role of a tabletop game in 2022 when it is definitely no longer its best use to simulate real life? Well, I'm here to make the argument that the best use of a tabletop game is to challenge people to think critically and to challenge people to interact socially. What does this have to do with Warhammer 40K? What does it have to do with D&D specifically? So in Warhammer 40K, just think about how the rules are designed. Where do we spend the most time in Warhammer 40K? It's rolling dice, of course. But specifically for what? When you roll dice in the shooting phase, you have to roll to hit, you have to roll to armor penetrate, you have to roll to wound. So those are three rules in a single interaction right there. And the purpose of those rules is to simulate the realism of firing your weapon and it accurately hitting the target. Generally speaking, in tabletop games, the more rules you add around a single event, that equates one-to-one -one with simulation, making that feel more real. But I don't really think that I need that to happen happen in Warhammer 40k to that level of detail. I actually think it's, it's kind of weird at this point. Let's take some other games that have similar interactions. X-Wing. Your opponent has, a, has an evasion value, you have a shooting value, you compare results. Infinity. You have a shooting value, your opponent has an evasion value, you compare results. Malifaux, your opponent has a defense or a willpower value, you have your attacking value, you compare results. It's a single interaction. And at the same time as it's a single interaction, both people are playing in that interaction. Warhammer 40k, you do all of your math, you have to ask your opponent for their stats if you don't have it memorized, you roll dice three times. I, I just think that's super not appropriate for, for 2022. Now yes, y'all are probably gonna ride me about what I said earlier about thinking critically. Yes, that, that is something that you have to do here, but I would argue that not having to simulate to this level of detail is more appropriate to a better flow of a gameplay. And the fact that you're not actually, your, play, your opponent isn't playing during that shooting phase except to tell you their toughness value, that's not really like creating a more engaging social interaction, which I think is really, really appropriate for 2022. In any of those games that I, I listed out, X-Wing, Infinity, Malifaux, just by the mere fact that you and your opponent are rolling off, that like sparks an interaction. Sometimes they swing RNG, sometimes you swing RNG, 
energy. And, and that moment makes it exciting for both people. So I, I don't think that that's any less of a simulation. In X-Wing, for example, your, your, your ships still have a hull value, a shield value, the evasion. The, the simulation isn't worse, but, but the interaction is faster. It's more social. It's better. Games that I think are well designed for what I think is the new role, the new best use of a tabletop game. You know, I've been pretty vocal on the channel that those are Malifaux, City of Mist, those are my favorite games. And it's because they're able to simulate such a wide range of flavors, of images, of different types of mechanics within one rule system. So th think about Malifaux, the, you have the flavor that's your ice witch flavor, you have the, the blind swordsman, the, the cowboy, zombies, eldritch horror, and that's only to name a few all within the same game. They make it so, so flavorful. How is that? Because of the way the game is designed. City of Mists. When you compare that to D&D's strength, constitution, intelligence, wisdom, charisma, dexterity, when you compare your base D&D stats to something like City of Mist, where City of Mist makes theme cards and these theme cards have power tags, the power tags encourage you to play a specific way. You want your backstory as a part of it? Your backstory can be a power tag. Like, imagine a character like Spider-Man, if Spider-Man was in City of Mist versus in D&D. You put Spider-Man in D&D, you're like, max out dexterity. You Every level, you're trying to get different feats. You, you max out intelligence, you max out strength. And somehow you have to create these feats that mechanically like work well in the game. There's some, some sort of balance to it. But you put Spider-Man in City of Mist instead. And I think this would just, let's make a video about this. Like, what would Spider-Man be in City of Mist? And basically, you, you can take his backstory. That can be a theme card, you know. Aunt May can be a theme card. Aunt May can be a power tag. You know, let's say Spider-Man is fighting Doc Ock and he's like, like in a pinch, he's about to he's he's about to take a big hit, and he wants to roll to defend himself or something. Well, then he he might use like like I have to stay alive for Aunt May as a power tag. His backstory is directly affecting his 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 dice roll. What happens when Spider-Man gets taken over by by Venom? You know what happens there? There's a way in City of Mist to simulate that. You know maybe his theme one of his theme cards. You know his theme card of with great power comes great responsibility breaks for some reason, and then that's replaced with like the Venom theme card and that affects his character sheet. You're not simulating like mathematically if Spider-Man would be able to do this or that in City of Mist, but you're simulating it, you know, like cinematically. And every component of his narrative is actually affecting his dice roll versus an antiquated system. I would consider an antiquated system like D&D just wants to put Spider-Man into some type of math formula and then along the way kind of sell you these, these little feats that you can add in to make him more Spider-Man-y. And that's like kind of cool. You know, there's like that level progression. I don't knock D&D as much as I knock uh, Warhammer 40k, but games like City of Mist and Malfo really create that opportunity to have these crazy, fantastical, cinematic experiences and in a really social way that's fast and, and intuitive and just like really high flavor. Anyway, I'm probably going to talk about this more in the future. I haven't really figured out the best way to present this idea, so that's where, you know, talking to you guys about it, maybe you guys can push back, maybe you guys can give me other ideas, maybe you guys have been feeling the same way, but I just really strongly believe that games that are designed to simulate mathematically or simulate in the same way that a video game can, but strictly worse, are not good systems for the modern human. What are good systems, I think, are ones that simulate interesting experiences socially. That's what I got. If you had fun, thought this was interesting, please leave a comment below. Please like and subscribe. We're always desperate. Please help me simulate my fantasy of a successful YouTube channel with a thriving Discord community at some point in my life. And we'll, we'll see you next time. Please like and subscribe. We've been through enough.